We have 50 state rankings. Where does your state stand for the best firearm laws? We're talking carry, purchase, possession, self-defense. One major organization came out with such a ranking. I'm gonna be giving you their answers not my answers, their answers. And I'm gonna tell you right now, a couple of them actually really surprised me. And then at the end, I'm gonna pick apart some of the methodology, some things I don't like, but guys, let's get into it. All right, so I already told you that there's some things that caught me by surprise. I'm gonna pick them off as we go through. We're gonna start from number 50, so the worst state, which will not be a surprise. And then we're gonna start working our way up the winner's board into uh, the freedom category. This organization, by the way, that put them together, linked in the description box below, is freedomin50states.org. Again, linked in the description box below. So without further ado, here are your bottom 10, starting with the worst. The worst state in the country for firearm freedom goes to the spirit of aloha, Hawaii. Maybe not too much of a surprise given some recent videos, but there you have it. Moving up from there, 49th worst, we go to Connecticut, then New Jersey, Massachusetts, Delaware, Rhode Island. Here's a shocker. California. Another couple shockers. Illinois, New York, Maryland. And then one that actually did catch me by surprise at number 40, Nebraska. So there you go. So my one surprise there was Nebraska. I was not expecting that one to be there. Otherwise, a bunch of known suspects. I mean, Illinois, California, Hawaii, New York. What were the odds those were going to be some of the worst states when it comes to firearm law and freedom? Now let's take a look at number 30 through 39. There were a couple surprises in here for me. Let's start with number 39, Oregon. Number 38, here's a surprise, Florida. Not what I would have expected given their reputation for stand your ground and so forth. Number 37, Virginia, also somewhat surprising, though not nearly as surprising as Florida 38. Number 36, Washington State. Number 35, Colorado. Number 34, Minnesota. Number 33, somewhat surprising, North Carolina. Number 32, Michigan. Number 31, New Mexico. Number 30, Mildly surprising, but we're already now basically to your, your mediocre states, Louisiana. So from that next group, again, the ones that really kind of caught me off guard was definitely seeing Florida in there by far and away. A little surprising to see North Carolina in there and, of course, Louisiana as well. Are you ready for the 20s? Here we go. Starting with number 29, we have Nevada. And then we go to number 28, South Carolina. Number 27, my home state of Wisconsin. Number 26, Pennsylvania. Number 25, Maine. Number 24, Iowa. Number 23, Indiana. 22, and mildly surprising, Texas. Number 21, Ohio. Number 20, Arkansas. So from the 20s, what really caught me off guard? I would have expected to see Texas a little bit better. And again, we're gonna be talking about the methodology a little bit at the end of this, okay? All right, now to the teens. And I say the teens because there is actually a multiple way tie for eighth place. So our list is actually gonna start at number 13 and then go through the multiple way tie for 17. So it's basically 13 through 19 is where we're at. But starting with the three way tie for 17th best firearm law state. Tied for 17, we have West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Alaska. At 16, we have Missouri. Number 15, we have Alabama. Number 14, we have North Dakota. Number 13, we have South Dakota. So there you go. All right, you ready for your top 10? And really it's a top 12 because there's a five-way tie for eighth place, and there's a three-way tie for third place. So let's get into the five-way tie for eighth place. We have Wyoming, Tennessee, Mississippi, Kentucky, and Georgia representing your five-way tie for eighth place. Seventh place, we have Montana. Sixth place, we have Vermont. And now we get into our three-way tie for third place. We have Utah, Idaho, and Arizona. I hope you're enjoying this 50 state ranking, but if you want to see how I would rank them, because it wouldn't necessarily be like this, let me know in the comment field below. If you just caught us browsing through, welcome aboard. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, all the YouTube things, don't forget to hit like to let me as well as YouTube algorithm know this is good stuff. More people should see it and Tom keep doing stuff like this. Back to the show. Now, here we go with our top two. And... 
one of them was mildly surprising, but re- not really. And number one definitely caught me off guard. So at this point, if you're wondering what are the two states left, we have Kansas and we have New Hampshire. If you had to guess right now, who's where? Well, if you had New Hampshire at number two, you would be correct. New Hampshire at number two. And the only state to earn a perfect score across all categories according to their methodology was Kansas. New Hampshire was a close second at 97.22%. Arizona was in that three-way tie along with Idaho and Utah at 94.44% before dropping down to Vermont, Montana, and Georgia at 91, 86, and 83% respectively. So there you go. Now, Here's what I have to think about their methodology. I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not in love with it, just bluntly. I had to spend a lot of time uh, crunching through all their data to figure out exactly how they're doing it. And don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not trying to bash on them. I think that they, they do a lot of good work. Um, this is not how I would rank it. They basically gave 90% of their weight to a handful of categories. 44% of their ranking went to what they called the concealed carry index, which was kind of a broad application of the concealed carry laws, not to include initial permit cost, which they put at 11% of weight. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you make a concealed carry permit cost a million dollars, obviously that's going to be insane. And I'm not suggesting that these things should be expensive, but putting it at 11%, particularly when you see what else is down here, it doesn't feel quite right. For instance, 8%, Local gun bans. Local gun bans feel a lot more important to me than whether or not your permit costs $100 or $50, as an example. That's that's kind of what I'm talking about. Firearm licensing index, 8%. Wait time period for purchases was 8%. Initial permit term was 5%. So whether or not you have to renew every two years versus five years. Again, a hassle, yes, deservedly in there, sure. But at 5% compared to everything else that follows, again, I think it's overcooked. Open carry index was 3%. Training or testing requirement was 3%. Strict minimum age, 3%. So what does that leave? Well, according to their methodology, less than 10% of the combined weight was given to the following categories. So-called assault weapons bans, no duty to retreat, registration of firearms, dealer licensing, built-in locking device requirements, restrictions on multiple purchases, background checks for private sales, design safety standards, I assume we're talking about the California handgun registry there, machine gun legal status, ballistic identification, I don't even know what that means exactly, perhaps you have to turn in some sort of uh, spent shell casing to local PD, retention of sales records, short-barreled shotguns, short-barreled rifles, large capacity magazine bands, and sound suppressor bands, as well as 50 caliber bands. So everything there that I just said at the end represents less than 10%. That's not exactly the way that I would rank it, but I think that this is an interesting methodology and probably is somewhat emblematic of what they would turn out at, even if you did correct and if I did the Tom Grieve ranking of how I would weight things perhaps a little bit differently. I suspect that Florida would in no way, shape or form be embarrassed at 38th overall. And again, I don't know how Nebraska wound up at 40. If people are from Florida, Nebraska, and if you guys are like, that makes complete sense to me, let me know in the comments section down below. Otherwise guys, what gave you a shock? What gave you a surprise? And what was perhaps not a surprise? What a shock? We've got first place, according to freedominthe50states.org, going to Kansas, followed by New Hampshire in second. And we've got our bottom two being Connecticut and Hawaii. I look forward to joining the comment section down below. And of course, our ever popular quote of the day comes from French writer and thinker Voltaire, who wrote, the most important decision you will ever make is to be in a good mood. Pro tip, he probably did not write that in English. You heard it here first, folks. I'm so sorry. Thanks for sticking around this long. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you think I should also spend some time trying to come up with some sort of Tom Grieve index as far as how I, as a ex-state prosecutor, criminal defense attorney, would look at weighting these given my depth of real world experience. Look forward to seeing y'all. Take care. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.